Have you tried using Notion, but were you quickly put off by the blank and empty page? Have you seen people make these stunning Notion dashboards and you're just sat there not knowing where to start? Don't worry, I've got you. I'm here to help you to give you a quick guide on how to make your Notion pages aesthetic. I'll teach you how to make your Notion pages go from this to this. Hi, welcome in or welcome back. My name is Ro. I'm a project manager, content creator, and healthy productivity fanatic. I've been using Notion for over five years, which means that I've built my fair share of Notion pages. I would like to share with you all of my tips and tricks that I have picked up during my Notion journey and help you hopefully quickly onboard and make these stunning, beautiful dashboards. Without further ado, let's just hop into tip number one. We're gonna start off with a blank and empty page because that's the thing we're all fearing, right? One tip that I can give you right away that is going to make a huge difference in how your pages look, but also just a personal preference of how you want your dashboards to feel is changing the font. You can do this by going all the way in the top over here, and then you can choose between the default, the serif and the mono font. It is completely up to you which one you prefer. One thing that is good to know here is that you can set this up per page. So if you have a one page set up to serif, doesn't necessarily mean that all of your pages will look like that. If you have a database within a page that is set up with a serif font, all of the pages within that database will automatically also use the serif one. But if you ever change it to mono, every page that you create after will use the mono font. So just something to keep in mind, it is better to make a decision on this as early on as possible. However, that doesn't mean you can never change it again or that you can actually mix and match if you want to have different different styles across your Notion. Another thing that is going to make a huge difference is actually changing the text to small because the more you're going to populate your Notion pages, the more cluttered and full it can feel. So if you're using small text, it's just going to feel like it fits a bit better on the page rather than it feeling too big on the page itself. The last one that I always advise people to turn on, especially if you're on a desktop, is using full width because it will allow you to use the entire width of your monitor instead of just staying in the middle column of the page. If you're using Notion on a mobile device, whether that be an iPad or a phone, I can imagine that turning on full width is not going to make that much of a difference. However, I think when it comes to aesthetic Notion pages, building it or using Notion on a mobile device would not be recommended anyways. So if you can use it on a computer because it simply just works better. Then my next tip would be to use widgets. I quickly navigated to my own Notion dashboard because I have a widget on my home screen that I could easily show you. I'll link a couple of widget options down below there. Most of them are all free to use. You just sign up and then you can pick from the widgets that ha they have in their gallery. My favorite is Indify because it's extremely simple to use and they have a bunch of cute ones like counters and clock widgets and calendar widgets and they're all very nice very easy to use and I especially like the clock one to have on my home dashboard they also have a weather one all of these little things just give a bit of life to your dashboard because it adds some moving elements it adds some real-time information which genuinely makes your notion feel like a dashboard rather than just a random note dumping app. The next one is actually a color scheme or a color palette. However, I think what a lot of people say whenever they give the tip like this is that you should pick one color and stick to that. And I just wholeheartedly disagree with that statement. I think picking one color for your entire notion or one color for your entire page is going to feel really stale and really boring. So something that I would suggest that you do is actually look up color palettes. You can literally go on Pinterest or Google to find aesthetic color palettes and you can pick a palette that you like. From there, you can actually use those colors to search for images and search for banners and actually search for icons, etc. That will actually match your palette. If you stick within that palette, all of the colors will match, but it won't feel boring because you're not just simply using one color. You can actually see this very well on my home dashboard. My banner here is sage green. All of my banners are actually three different colors. They're either light blue, sage green, or pink. And then across my entire Notion space, you'll actually see a lot of green from plants. You'll see a lot of pink and you'll also see a lot of like little blue elements. So again, I'm using these colors consistently, but I'm not just sticking to one color because it would make my Notion look very boring very quickly. Speaking of color palettes, you don't have to go all out with this. You don't have to make it more difficult for yourself. Something that I did is I wanted to make sure that my milestone database felt like it was alive and it was all matching, but I wasn't constantly using the same cover image over and over again because I felt like that would get boring. So something I did is I made little color palette and then I searched for those color names on Pinterest. Pinterest is literally your best friend when it comes to making your Notion pages aesthetic. It allows you to find one inspiration of other people's Notion pages. Two, it allows you to find super cute images that usually have high enough quality to use in your Notion space. And then three, it is super easy to kind of like continue clicking. So I first started with one purple image and then all the images below that were suggested were also in that same color scheme. So I could just continue clicking without having to constantly search for the right terms. This allowed me to add all these cute banners to 
all of my pages so that they kind of kept this consistent color scheme of like the pink and the blush and the purple. This page is a very simple one, but because of all the colors, it still looks really cute. And now whenever I reflect this page, it looks really cute and just makes me happy. Another thing that is going to make a huge difference in making your pages look good is using columns. As you can see in this page, I have one main column at the top. Then I have technically three columns. So I have one off the side that goes across the entire page. And then I have one column over here, which is my to today, this week and incoming view. And then underneath that, I even have two columns for my project my goals, my resources, and my notes. It used to be really hard to add columns into Notion. You would have to jump through all of these hoops to kind of make it happen, but Notion made this so much easier. I would say like one and a half year ago, if you just do slash and then you type call, you will find the option to add two columns, three columns, four columns, or five columns. By clicking this, you'll automatically get five columns in your page and you can actually drag a single column above this. So now you have a single column and you have five columns underneath. This kind of helps you to lay out your page more easily and then you can just drag and drop your blocks that you want in here. Something that I've noticed that helps a lot when you try to do this without your like your pages shuffling around a ton, drawing it out on paper first and then making it a notion. So kind of like make a little quick sketch of what you want the layout of your notion to be and then add the columns and stuff into notion because that prevents you from accidentally adding a column too many and then having to delete it with the risk that all of your pages start to shift because that can be really tedious and annoying. But if you know what you're making. It's just going to make the whole process so much smoother. Another something that I really like is using call out boxes to create menus. I have done this over here. So this kind of like menu box is actually a call out. So I'll quickly go to my playground to show you how to make this. So let's actually make a page. This is going to be our reading list. And then we're going to have another page. So that is going to be our travel diary. And then we're going to have one more. We're going to have another page that is going to be our um, habit tracker. So we have all of these pages living in our notion, but it looks a little bit messy. Like I want to make this into a cute menu. Well, what I first would do is in this page itself, I would add an icon. You can either go for an emoji, an icon, or even a custom one. Like you can upload a GIF or any cute picture that, that you find on the internet. The easiest way to do that is just paste the link in here rather than saving it to your computer and then uploading the file. You can go to icons and let's search for a book. You can give these books all kinds of colors. For my menus, I like to go for the light gray one. Then travel diary. That is going to be a plane because, you know, it's about travel. And then we're going to have a habit tracker. Let me see. Can we have target? I think that's the one I'm looking for. Yeah. There we go. That's a little goal icon. So now we have these three pages. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go slash and you're going to go call out and you'll find this little box over here. You can actually change the style uh, of the call out by clicking on the little context menu on the side and then go to color. For my menus, I like to go to the default one because then it basically looks like an empty box. And then over here, I usually add something like a map or a navigation icon because I always feel like that makes sense for a menu. And then I call it menu or navigation or whatever you want to call it. Something that you'll notice is if I'm in this call out and I actually enter, it will enter out of the call out, meaning that you could use it as a heading or something. If you're in here and you hold shift and you actually press enter, then you continue in this box and you can type whatever you want. From here, if you've done that, you can actually drag all of these pages in here. You actually don't even have to enter. You can just drag them in here straight away. But the reason I like to enter is because I like to add a separation line. This is a general trick that I like to use in a lot of places in my notion. I'll show it on my own dashboard in a second. But if you click outside of the call out box, and you type three dashes, you'll actually get this nice separation line and you can drag it in here. This creates this nice little line under the title and the pages, which immediately makes it feel like a menu. Then again, if you want to actually make a bit of a more sensible layout in this page, you can go to columns, add a second column, then you can add it over here and you can drag the column like this. And now you have your menu and you can just fill the rest of the page the way that you want. This is such an easy way to clean up your pages and like keep your databases kind of boxed in and easier to navigate to while still maximizing the use of the space on the rest of your page. Then, like I said, that separation line is going to help a lot in kind of like emphasizing titles instead of underlining the text, because I'll quickly show you the difference. If I get rid of my separation line here and I underline this, I think this looks a lot cleaner than this. And I can't necessarily explain why. I think even if you were to 
add a lot of spaces in here so that the whole line is going all across. I still don't think it looks as good as this one. I think it's because of the color. Um, it just looks better if it's a little bit lighter gray rather than the darker black of the text itself. So I think it just looks a lot cleaner and I love to use these separation lines to just kind of create these headings a little bit more standing out than the default heading, but also not as standout as a navigation box or something. Something else that helps a lot to kind of box in things is giving databases color. And you can't do this by default. So here I have a database actually. And if I go here, there's no way for me to actually add a color. However, you can see it with my notes and my resources and also my today view that there is kind of this gray box around it. So as soon as you have a toggle and you put a database view inside the toggle and you then change the color of the toggle itself, it will change the entire box around the database. So this allows you to kind of easily have databases also within a frame because a database within a callout box doesn't necessarily look too good. It makes it a bit messy. Like the whole layout gets a little bit awkward and weird. So I prefer to use this trick by adding it in a toggle. And also just in general, toggles are great for if you want to have a lot of information on one Notion page. Like for instance, here, my home dashboard, I have a today view, a week view, an incoming view. I have my projects, my goals, my notes, my resources. Everything is on this page, but it still doesn't look too cluttered. It's because I can toggle on and off things. Um, I even have a toggle within a toggle because if I want to schedule my weekly recurring tasks, these two things are useful, but I only need to see them once a week during my weekly review. And for the rest of the week, I don't look at it and I just close that toggle. So it's kind of hidden. The same is with the this week view. I don't look at it when I'm not planning ahead. So I can just close it and only look at my today view. Another thing that kind of speaks for itself, but it's really easy to get lost in this is try to be consistent with what you do. So if you use a three size header, to indicate projects and your goals sections on this page. If you navigate to another page, make sure that you're also using the three size header here. Make sure that you kind of come up with a layout or an aesthetic that you like for one page and then recreate that. And it's okay to kind of deviate from it from time to time. As you can see, my banner has a different color here. And on my home screen, I have this cute little like GIF that is slightly moving. It's like a small little leaf. But if I go to my career one, it has a static icon and it has a pink Heather. So again, it's okay to deviate from this. It's okay to make your pages a little bit different. My resources here are also shown different than on my homepage. It is okay to deviate from it, but still try to make like the basic layout of your pages, kind of like the framework of your pages. Try to stay consistent in what you use there because it's makes it's going to make such a huge difference if your notion looks the same across the board because it's going to feel like a, a unified experience rather than you clicking through all kind of like your notion eras, right? Because I feel like a lot of people that struggle with this, they started out with notion at one point, then they kind of evolved. So they made a new notion or like a new dashboard and then they evolved again. And then if you click through the notion, you'll see like different aesthetics for all of the pages. Spend some time on like making the aesthetic across the board the same because it's going to make a huge difference in how you experience like your entire notion space as a whole. Something else that can hugely help in this is using linked database views. If you don't know what it is, let me actually quickly navigate to my playground. You know how you can do slash and then you can do database and you can add like a new database, right? You can add a brand new database into Notion. You can add that as an inline. So that means that it will actually show up on this specific page, or you can add it as a page and it will create a whole new page, which kind of creates a click through situation like we have here. Something that is going to make a huge difference. If you already have a database, let's say you have a habit tracker and it is shown on this page. So let's let's quickly just make one. Let's make a database. Let's make it an inline over here. This is habit tracker playground so I can more easily find it. And then you you kind of want to show that on your main dashboard as well, but you only want to see the habit of today, like the entry from today. So what you can do is you can do slash, you can go to linked view of database. You can select the database that you want to see, and then you can say, it's fine that we have a table view. I'm okay with that. Um, something that I also like to do, this is a bonus tip, hiding the database titles makes your page look infinitely cleaner. And then to make sure you only see the thing that you enter today, you can go to add a filter. You can say let's on the date and you only want to see uh, is let's say today because then it will update every single day. Um, and now you can only see that database line that you added today. But let's say we add another one and we actually change the date to tomorrow. You can immediately see it like removes itself from the main dashboard. But if you go to your habit tracker, you actually see two entries, one today and one tomorrow. To give you an example of what this could look like if you go all the way with this is this is 
actually what I did with my today view. So I have a task database and on my today view, I only see my tasks that are relevant for today. I have my content database, which contains everything in my entire content space. But on this overview, which is a linked version of the database, I can only see the things that are happening today. If you go to my events tab, you can only see the things that are happening today. As you can see, you can even add tabs and they can link to different databases. So this one is linked to my DAS database. This one is linked to my content database. This one is linked to my experience database. And if I add a new one over here, I can link to any database in my entire Notion setup and I can just create a new tab for it. This also allows you to make really clean overviews while you can still navigate through all of the things that are happening today without stacking them all on top of each other and making your pages look ginormous. I've mentioned this earlier, but you can actually use like little animations as page icons. You can also add GIFs to your pages as images and, and pictures. It looks really cute, but one of my recommendations would be is don't go overboard with this. Don't add 7 million animations and GIFs to your pages because it's just going to look really cluttered and really busy. Just find one or two that you think are really pretty. And also I would recommend adding them as a page icon or as a small picture on your page rather than as a banner, because you can also add GIFs as banners into Notion. I've seen people do this and to my, this is a very personal taste thing. I think it always looks ridiculously busy if your entire banner is animated. Kind of like a clock, which is also a moving element in your page. It does give your page a lot of life if you use GIFs, but please don't go overboard with it because it's just gonna feel too overwhelming and too cluttered. And that's exactly the opposite of what we're trying to achieve with the aesthetic notion list today. Then another thing, I keep referring to this today view, but I think it just showcases so many of the things that I've learned over the past five years of using notion. So if you have a database view, you can actually go over here, select rename. And then there's this little button over here that allows you to change the icon into any of notions native icons. As you can see, this adds a really simple visual element into the tasks, the content, the events, the trips, the live music, and the overdue stuff. And it just makes it look so much better than the default table icon that Notion gives to any database view. And you can actually see that I've done this all across the board of my Notion dashboard. So my ongoing projects have a little folder. My goals database view is actually separated in all of my life areas. By the way, if you're ever curious about my entire Notion tour, I do have a video on my channel. I'll make sure to link it in the cards in the description box down below. I'll walk you through like all of the specifics and in-depth stuff about my Notion setup. Um, for instance, my life areas. But as you can see, my experiences has a little sparkle. My career has a little bag. My content has a little video icon. My finance has a little money icon. And if you have a sharp eye, you can actually see that these life areas here have the same icons as I use on the main pages that I have for all of the dashboards. So if you go to my career dashboard, which again has a little work bag, I have all of the things that are related to my career. And you can see that my goals database has a little goal icon. The resources has a little paperclip icon. My notes has a little paperclip icon and stuff like this. It's such a small thing, but it makes such a huge difference in how your notion looks and feels because it's these little things that set you apart from being a standard notion user to someone with a very aesthetic notion setup. I've kind of said this already, but before you design your actual databases or your layout, draw it out on paper, but also go into your notion, make yourself an empty page and just play around. Just, just kind of see what kind of blocks there are. We can see that we can actually have an image and then let's add this funky one with all the colors. And if we add it, how would we like to showcase this? Can we, can we put it maybe above the table? Will that look good? Will that look silly? Like there are so many things that you can do in Notion and sometimes it just requires you see this, this image probably wouldn't really work really well here, but maybe it works well over there. Oh, actually that makes, makes a lot of sense because it's a longer image. So it make it fits perfectly underneath the menu. I'm just yapping here, but basically give yourself a playground page. Give yourself a page like I just made and kind of see what could be fun. Let's see if we if we search for play. Um, Do we have maybe a, a funky? That could be fun. There we go. Add a little smiley face and then let's add a cover. Um, Let's change the cover again. I'm going to go to Unsplash and I'm going to look for plant because it's one of my favorite covers in, in Notion. Uh, we're going to add a nice little plant one. OK, let's reposition it. We're going to drag it like that. I actually don't really like this image, so let's just replace it really quickly. Let's go back to Unsplash 
trash and actually let's look for let's look for a giphy let's look for a plant because we're gonna we're gonna make a plant themed page i think that is cute i think some of these are a little bit busy i don't think all of these plant gifs would work let's see if we if we can find a cute one maybe that one could be cute that's all i did this took me literally 10 seconds and it gives me a really good idea on what i can do with this page and what i like it gives me an idea on the aesthetics it gives me an idea on the layout and you don't have to actually have all your databases ready and everything i know that moving databases in notion can be really scary because all of your links could break and stuff so make sure that you make a mock-up before you start with the final product and you actually start moving valuable pages in your notion because that can be really overwhelming and scary otherwise something else that i just noticed that i don't think i actually wrote down in my tip list but something that i always do if you don't work in notion with a team turn off your comment section because it's just irrelevant you're never going to comment on your own things so you do this by going to the three dots in the corner and then customize page and then i turn top level page discussions off i turn backlinks off and i turn page comments into minimal as you can see it kind of saves some space over here and i've never commented on my own page nor do i plan to do so and this is a really easy thing to just kind of get rid of some visual clutter in your notion space i think that concludes my list of tips for aesthetic notion pages however if you would like to know something specific feel free to let me know in the comments down below because there might be something that you've seen in someone else's notion and you don't know how to do yourself i am more than happy to make like additional youtube shorts to kind of explain things that people are asking in the comments so if there's anything feel free to like link me to someone else's notion tour someone else's page a certain picture on pinterest i love to figure out how people do things in notion so if you have any requests feel free to hop in the comments down below and i'll try to help you the best i can of course if you don't want to miss any of the follow-up youtube shorts feel free to subscribe to my channel you'll also find a bunch of already existing notion content on my channel so if that's your cup of tea i would highly suggest watching another video of mine because i have a ton out there i also plan to make many more so feel free to stick around for all of that and if this specific video was helpful to you please toss it a cheeky like because it does really help the video get to more people and with all of that being said thank you so much for watching and i will see you on the next one bye everyone